Your okay, Honor. Welcome to the February 5th meeting of the Ware Board of Selectmen. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Discussed briefly a personnel issue in non public. That's why we're starting a little bit late here. Uh, first on the agenda for department head items, Chief Sean Kelly, we've got a couple of different items. Uh, one relates to animal control officer and some of the uh, suggestions made that we're going to develop into a uh, revised job description. So, um, Chief, if we could go through those, and then um, um, I, I don't, I don't really know how you'd like me to perceive, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we, uh, I've got um, draft changes to operational. Uh, matters related to the animal control position, but I, I do not have um, uh, draft changes to the job description. Um, I, I wouldn't anticipate having, uh, well, it wouldn't be before your next regularly scheduled Board of Selectmen meeting anyway. Um, I, I hesitate to go into too much detail on draft at this point because it is in such draft form. It, uh, I'll, I'll certainly answer any questions you might have. Yes. Well, there is one. I think, um, is that current at the at the present time, or does that need to be revised? I think that it would be if if we're going to go ahead with this uh, incorporating elements of this draft, it, it should be uh, um, the job description itself would probably benefit from revision as well. So you'd want to incorporate some of the stuff in this action plan draft with this SOP and with the jobs. Yeah, I think I think there's two elements. Uh, one being, as you've described, uh, merely the job description, and then the second, more of an operational nature. Now, quite a bit of of this, as far as suggestions are, re are concerned, relate to. Uh, how calls of service for service come about. So I think uh, if you could take a few minutes to go by, go through that, so that you know people listening, if they have questions about that, not that they have questions tonight, but I mean, as far as why we're looking at this, sure. Uh, as far as how the uh, how the calls for service for uh, animal control will come about, uh, if we uh, or when we uh, redo this and adjusted to that okay um, a, a number of these well for, first of all we're, we're uh, um, I had first started looking at some of the operational nature of, of this um, last summer fall time frame I don't have a real accurate but uh, since then because simply because we were um, we were grossly over budget with so many months remaining in the year. 
so since then, one of the things that has also changed that has impacted the draft you have in front of you is how uh, we dispatch calls for service organizationally. Um, as you know, our contract with uh, Goffstown Police Dispatch now includes uh, provisions for what we call live dispatching, whereas before everything was, um, uh, well, it was a matter of record, but it had to be transferred over. So in other words, after you know, 5 o'clock on a Friday, everything was retained at the Goffstown Dispatch, and then on Monday it was transferred over and all of the backlog was caught up. So we were running... Uh, you know, essentially two sets of books. Um, and that lent itself to um, uh, looking for ways to get around uh, a, a hurdle that uh, oftentimes presented us difficulties. So now with the, the live dispatching, we're using, we're, we're uh, it's one for one. If I get a call from uh, the Gosstown Dispatch, it's entered into their log, and it just automatically, we have, it, it's the one number. Mm -hmm. Everything gets tracked in the same way. So now we're looking away for efficiencies for how we can better track the operations of the Ware Police Department, and some of the draft items that you have in front of you are reflective of that. So what you have here is the way that all the other calls are handled. That's, well, yes. That's yes, exactly right. And so the animal control calls will be handled in the same way as any other calls. That's correct. Okay. I guess generally speaking, the other issue dealt with total hours the job is budgeted for. And, uh, right. That's that's what first brought this to our attention. Is is that we we're we we're right up against what we we're looking at as a budget issue. Mm -hmm. So the recommendation, and again, this is something that the board will be discussing and working on, but is that it's uh, no more than a thirty-hour a week position. Uh, but that's all up for discussion. But that would be the max. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes, we'd have to bring it back into uh, the limits of the law for part-time employment. So what kind of a timeline do you think we need, or, or really you need, to, to incorporate this into the job description and be able to get back to us with really? it? Something practical. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to put at least a deliberative session in the rearview mirror uh, before I, I commit to that. Um, so, though, if you press, I could probably have a, a draft to Naomi um, by next week. Um, I would prefer that you didn't press and uh, uh, perhaps the following Monday. Which we're not meeting. We're not meeting the 19th. It'd be the 26th. 26th. Even better. February 26th. Because we're meeting the 12th, and then we've decided not to meet the 19th because it's a holiday. At that time, we'll review the job description <coughs> and uh, <coughs> question, revise if necessary. And then once that we have it solid, I think that the uh, plan probably, well, Let's see what we come up with first. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how um, you get documents from the town administrator, but I'll try to have it uh, to her in such a timely way that we might be able to turn around so you'll have the, at least the draft to look at before meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other board members have questions? Or board? Well, it's pretty, it's very rough, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah this is how it handles out. Yeah, it's very rough. Okay, the other. I'm sorry, Naomi, what was the date on that? Uh, 26th is up Monday. Okay, thank you. The other thing we have you on the spot for is uh, hawkers and peddlers. Okay. 
<clears throat> so some four or five months ago, September, whatever September was, uh, you had first started looking at hawkers and peddlers and had asked uh, a town council and me to look at them. Um, and with the, with the budget season that got tabled, as you well know. So I've, uh, uh, I'm here tonight with, with some of my thoughts. And uh, well, that's all they are. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went through it and, and kind of went through it with as an objective a uh, highlighter as I possibly could and, and asked the questions that I would anticipate somebody uh, that was a third party you know if somebody came to uh, the town administrator's office and said I'd like a hawkers and peddlers license and if this was handed to them what questions would they have as a result so uh, if you have uh, the current ordinance in front of you everybody mm -hmm. on, on the first page there section one and license required I it, it asks that you shall not engage in business of hawk or peddler or our, our tenant inventor, blah, 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 unless a license has been obtained to do so. The first question that pops up right away is whose license? Because you can obtain one from the state of New Hampshire as well. So would it be uh, from the state? Do we define it as one license, either ours or the state's? Can we do that? Or are they required to have a state license first? And then, or do we uh, have it as an end statement that you must have a state license and then we will consider uh, your application for your local license? <clears throat> the definitions, I don't have a problem with, uh, certainly not. They, they come straight from statute, um, copy, copied verbatim from statute, I, I would guess. Uh, so on page two, uh, in the, the, the third section, license required, um, license shall be issued by the Board of Selectmen through the ch Chief of Police to whom such authority is herewith delegated. A at first, that seems like a benign sentence. But as I went through the remainder of the document, there are so many other thumbs in the pie that this may start to get a little bit uh, hairy for somebody that's trying just simply to get a hawkers and peddlers license and I'll, I'll point out what I mean as we go along application for license in section four is going to be supplied by the chief of police mm -hmm. uh, and if you would just mark section four bullet G we're going to come back to that in a minute <coughs> Uh, sales on public property, I think there should, needs to be two separate paragraphs there. The first paragraph starting with no person shall place or expose for sale. The second uh, paragraph starting uh, with the very next line that starts no person shall place or expose for sale. And then later, later in that same section, it asks, um, well, it defines that you can't do this, 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 or this on uh, town property or on town aware school district or John Stark Regional School District unless given express permission from the appropriate school board. Does that exclude the board of selectmen from the process because they're doing it on campus? If they are given a license or, or written permission rather from the appropriate school board, do you have the authority to either accept or deny it or do you merely do you even get a copy of the written permission? <clears throat> okay, and this is where it starts to get sloppy, and I refer you back to that section three. <clears throat> well, really in section six there. You, ha you have uh, a, 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 a Ware School District, a John Stark School District, and the Board of Selectmen in section six on top of the Chief of Police in section three. Further down in section seven, bullet E, shall first register with the Board of Selectmen. You're back on, on, the, on the hot plate. So um, in that instance, in bullet E, it talks about um, uh, exceptions. And in, in, in one of them, it, uh, it goes on, blah, blah, blah. Um, any such organization, 
these are the nonprofit organizations, which are listed and defined a little bit uh, in detail, shall first register the, with the Board of Selectmen. By what process? Is there forms existing? Do they have to uh, schedule for uh, to be on the agenda to be heard by the board, or uh, for the board to be heard, heard by the board, um, and then you make a, a vote, in which you make them a, an exception, or is that just a, the authority of, of uh, your representative, the town administrator? All that should be defined. <clears throat> Okay, in section eight, conduct. A hawker, peddler, or itinerant vendor shall register on a daily basis with the Ware Police Department and provide them with a list of names of people who will be hawking or peddling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that seems overly burdensome. Uh, to both the police department and the hawker, peddler, or itinerant. If we know in the first instance that uh, you are going to issue a person the authority with a local uh, license that they're going to be in town from this day to this day, referring back to that bullet G that I asked you to tag, because that also talks about in, in, that, in that conduct, says the exact times when hawking or peddling will take place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you've already defined it in, in section four, bullet G, 8 a.m., it's gotta be after 8 a.m., but before dark. You're adding an extra burden on the, on the, the hawker peddler itinerant and the police department to try and further winnow that down on a daily basis. If you know, for instance, that somebody's gonna be here from March 1st to March 15th, and they can only act between this time and this time, um, and this is what, and they're uh, here for a lawful purpose. What are they doing coming back every day? That's, that seems like a, an overly burdensome process for everybody. If I may interrupt you, Chief, what are changing, do you agree to change the wording? And I'm, what I'm looking at is the uh, infamous magazine sales oh, yeah, where they right. have people that come in the town yep. and they're all different. You know, yep. would you agree to have something added to that if council agrees that? when they, they come to the police department and they give a list of all the people that will be in town. I would insist on that. I think that that's, like, okay. I think that. But it doesn't say that. Yes, that so that's right. Because <coughs> this, this talks about exact location, hawking and peddling, at the exact times, if we, we got over that hump, uh, give full description, including plate numbers of any vehicle that will be used. Well, um, if we have the list of names, et cetera, et cetera, and, you know, Johnny Jones doesn't appear on that list. We're sorry, Mr. Jones, but you're out. I mean, that they should give for everybody that even if they're not here, that may possible. You know, That's right. We should make sure that they're supposed to Yep. I love the magazine companies. <coughs> they're wonderful. Yeah, yeah. keeps in business. <coughs> okay, so if you would turn on to the next page, please. Section. Just the, I'm sorry. Under the uh, license requirements, the exceptions, et cetera. Bu uh, bullet seven, huh? Yeah. Uh, full home day came to mind. Do you have to license every vendor at home full home day? I, I thought I saw. It's a not for profit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think if you get the, uh, if you have like the carnival people that come in, they have licenses anyway. So, I mean, yeah, but they're not. Uh, yeah, but not. they have vendors too. At the and they have their own vendors, so they have to get a license. They're not. Uh, Except, for no. Except for us, no, we're a non-profit though. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. so okay. So, so so anybody not. that's making a profit there has to be licensed. So that would be any vendor. If they're selling hand-carved items. No, no, no that's not true though, though Tom. Because if in bullet B there, yeah. it yeah. says any person selling product of his own labor or labor of immediate family or product of his own farm or one that he tills. Yeah. So I, I would suggest that if, if uh, you, right. you have a, a, a duck carver that's down there and he's selling them for a gazillion dollars a piece, this would be an exception to the license requirements. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. okay. Uh, unless you have more on that, Tom. Okay, then if we would turn to the next page, prohibited conduct, bullet nine. There are five bullets in that section, A's through E, and um, 
we're adding to the mix now licensed for and by the health officer. So <laughs> now, now we've got uh, the chief of police, the board of selectmen, the two different school districts, uh, potentially the state of New Hampshire um, hawkers and peddlers license issuers, and now the health officer. Um, we, we've got to find a way to streamline this, and it, it, more, more than that even, is uh, bullet, the, the enforcement of those five bullets. Uh, they, they can't sell food or beverage for immediate consumption unless they have available for public use a litter receptacle and further complies with the town's recycling requirements. Who's doing that? <laughs> Me, Benji? <laughs> um, um, like in the case of um, Old Home Day, we do do that. We recycle everything to separate it all. Yeah, but, but that's my, but that's my point. You're you know, if so, old home day, that's something that we are, as a community, we are mm -hmm. actively and directly engaged in. We're talking about somebody from outside that's mm -hmm. coming yeah, in. Yeah, you look at the carnival, they've yep. got trash belt. So the, the end of the day comes around, it's getting close to dark, they have to conclude their business, they get in the, the jalopy and they take off. Mm -hmm. The mess is there, who's, who's enforcing it? True. Okay, so similarly, if you look through those bullets, you have to ask yourself those same questions. Laura has suggested taking out the health officer. I think to rewrite it, that if the stream involved, we, we got to streamline this. You have to do the health officer, <laughs> but have it if it's involving food, have the, have them review it, not go to the people. Right. There's, 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 and very frankly, there's, there's ways we can do this so that it doesn't put an added burden on the on the community but in fact puts the burden on the applicant you know, they can walk it around and ask the health officer for a review and signature they can walk around and ask yeah. chief Vizina and, and uh, 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 Benji and, and, and me and, and whomever else for their signature um, they, they don't have to have they don't, they don't have to have we don't have to do it uh, how does that work, for example, <coughs> with the snowmobile club? Do they have to have like a temporary license in order to sell food? Or we have a, or a permanent well, license? yeah, we have a state something. There's something in the I don't but remember. Selling food, I think. You, yeah, yeah, but right. A state and just should license yeah, there's a state, the state but then right. there is also I mean, which is we're subject to all of the restaurant inspection, right? Yeah. Because when we got down to uh, Fremont there was a new building inspector and he wasn't gonna let anybody open except for us because we had taken the time to put in the fire suppression system in the trailer because yeah. we knew that was coming because you can't give no place for a fire or anything else yeah but so there is a certificate on the wall in there from the state I don't know so that, so that goes back to that one of the first questions I asked about but we are a nonprofit we just go yeah, through the pace about things like the Chicken barbecue put on by the region or the uh, I don't know if they have. See, I think we're a nonprofit, but we did it just because we had to comply yeah, going to other towns. Yeah. 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 So they have their breakfast there. Yeah. So they yeah. also have just a, like an outside uh, people cooking hamburgers and hot dogs, dogs and so yeah. forth. Uh, I don't know if they. It's just something we should make sure we clarify. Mm -hmm. so well, I know the scouts have to have, um, they have to meet the requirements and part of it is the serve safe certificate. In other words, they yeah, you have, have to have levels of it that you can you serve. Have gloves, you got to have hair nets, you got to have. Proper way, and you have to be trained in it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to go to where actually. Right. So, my last comment uh, in the review, folks, is in bullet 10 the revocation of the license. In, in addition to any penalty imposed, such license may be revoked for any violation of this ordinance or state statute pertaining to the conduct of business. Um, but, you know, I, I hear Mark Broth <laughs> in, in the back of my head saying, what's your due process? Um, and if, if it's going to be uh, that it's that you're, you're going to do a revocation based on the finding of the court, then um, bullet 11 should probably be in front of bullet 10. Um, where it talks about any person violating the ordinance shall be guilty of a violation, which would put it in the purview of the Goffstown uh, District Court. Uh, and then you'll let, allow them to exercise due process over the matter, and then you take action on uh, whatever their finding is. But it, it, if it's, if it's going to precede bullet 11, you'd have to have your own due process, I think. <clears throat> So 
So I think that, that's a mouthful. Mm. Yeah. It is. Does anyone recall why this nope. came into effect? I mean, it's 1996. Yeah, I didn't know it was until recently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, quite a few years ago. Well, we could yep. ask Craig what's the matter. <laughs> I mean, there was some particular reason. Oh, God. Lane's not here. Yeah. Yeah. Doug's still around, I believe. I don't know if they live in town, but st he was still around last I knew. Mm -hmm. Are you gotten some suggestions from the area? Yeah, it just seems that, I mean, if you look at number one, it says the exact same thing in number three yeah. for a sentence. Mm -hmm. It's identical word for word. Right. Then if you get to number six, you repeated yourself except for you just added. John Stark, John Stark and Ware School, they all say the same. So I think there's a way that could be neatened and maybe a little clearer. Because mm -hmm. right. it's a lot of wording, it's exactly the same thing. And she said to review 321.3 because these may have changed. Yeah, 321 3 talks about the exceptions, which is section t -t 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 7. Seven. Yeah. They're a little bit different because her claim was that this was written by the old. By the initial one, right? It was rewritten in 88, and it looks like Ware used the prior version to the writing this section. So, well, I think so that it doesn't get lost, maybe uh, like we did with the previous thing even though we can move it along a <coughs> further down the road than that, but we should set a time and say, okay, we're going to go back and look at a, a revision of this uh, April 15th or whatever, Just pick a date on a Monday sometime, uh, maybe six weeks or eight weeks down the road, so we'll have plenty of time to do it, but that we don't lose it in the process. April 16th is a Monday night. Is this in an electronic form somewhere? Yeah. No, it's an old typewriter. <laughs> Actually, I could, mm -hmm. now that I've got it scanned in, I can convert it to Word. Because it's PDF, so I can convert it back to Word, and then you can work with it. Mm -hmm. No, no, this is an old typewriter, but I can scan it in. Right. And it, when you scan it, it's PDF. And I have a program that converts PDF to Word. You can export it into Word. So I could do that for you, Sean. I've just been voluntold. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought you offered. Oh, yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> for April That's 6th. fine, Naomi. Uh, April 16th yeah, would not be ideal. I, I mean, if we could push that, you, yeah, if we, could, if we could push that so off even a week or two, that would be uh, better. Oh, that's right, because that's the week that they. Yeah. That's the week that the on-site inspections. Yeah, well, it's the week preceding, so I'm going to be a little busy. So some of those are on the day. Yeah, I mean, I can share it with all of you then. I don't have to share it just to Sean if you guys want your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yes, in Word. We could look at... 23rd, maybe, or the 30th? Or the 30th of April. 30th? Sure. Thank you. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And I can attach you the RSA so you guys can look at it as well. It's for, it's similar, very close. Anything else on this? Okay. Okay, next on our agenda is. Sean, I think that's, did you have anything more? Yeah, I had that, uh, the follow-up from last week's electric thing with the, the oh, lights. Oh, yeah. that's stands. right. Okay. All right, so we requested, um, uh, requested uh, quotes from four vendors. Two have responded um, in anticipation of what we thought might be an inevitable question. We have also asked those same vendors to provide us with um, uh, 
you know, a, re a replacement for existing uh, equipment or replacement with LED equipment, which would have the advantage of a longer life, et cetera, et cetera. The upfront cost is, is more, um, but according to Storch Lighting Solutions, who is not one of our vendors, you're going to hear from tonight, uh, the, L the LED option that does have a longer life. I can only tell you what they say to me when I go buy a flashlight. Um, all right, so you saw Bristol Electric uh, uh, last week, and well, let me find it. What they said was, I'll find it. Hold on. The reason for their cost estimate was that um, each fix, this is, I'm reading directly from their response, each fixture is out as a possibility of a lamp being out or the ballast being out or both. If each fixture has both out, you're looking at approximately $100 per fixture in parts um, for four, four pole lights. One overhead light over the garage doors and the gym door wall sconce. We have a labor rate of $65 an hour, and it will take two of us approximately three hours to repair all of the lights. I quoted the worst possible, uh, worst case scenario. We will invoice for what we use, which may be less, but we don't know at this time. So that's the explanation for uh, the, the quote on the equate the replacement of um, the existing for 875, and that's Bristol Electric out of Bedford. <coughs> For their LED quote, it's $985, $110 more for the, the LED. Uh, the other respondent was Pellerin Electric of River Road here in town. Um, They did not offer a, a price for uh, the the two. They only offered a price for the two, um, the four parking lot stanchions at seven oh five. Um, so I, I don't have I don't have that apples to apples on the two remaining fixtures. Seven oh five for the LED and six hundred for the the uh, the replacement value. Is there any reason they didn't include the others? You know? They got the same. They got the same information as everybody. So I don't know. Uh, maybe they just missed. It. I don't know. Did anybody talk to the? I know we have an electrician here in town that does all the work in the town building. Did anybody contact him to get a price? Uh, I mean, we've already got him more or less in our, uh, in our loop for doing all the other building. Um, that's not something I can speak to in public session. I think whoever we hire, that it makes sense to go with the LED. We're talking about a little over hundred dollars difference, but you know, it does get discouraging when I find that my light bulbs have a longer life expectancy than I do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's true. They you know they claim they'll last 20, 20 years or something. Oh, the cut the payback on the energy system. Yeah, is also absolutely. Yep. I mean, the state's going to all that now for their overhead lighting on um, roadways. And yeah, uh, I mean, it wouldn't, to me, it wouldn't make sense to replace the picture. Uh, <coughs> no, you're giving the prices for apple to apple, so if you go. Um, well, we can't do much unless we get a price from at least that. Well, if you're looking at, at the. Uh, If you look at the labor rates, um, what Pellerin did was they gave a flat rate of 225 for the four 
um, street lights. And uh, Bristol's is uh, $65 an hour for the six units for three hours. So if you if it's three hours for six units, knock two hour or knock an hour off. Um, what's what's you know? Fifty six twenty five for four of them. You know if you divide the labor cost right. by so four for four poles. That's what they're looking at for labor. Yep. So the Bristol's Bristol's coming in lower. Wasn't wasn't Bristol two guys? Because the, the, the parts two price, guys at sixty five dollars an hour. Yes. Yeah, so the replacement cost was. What is that? Huh? Per person, or is that? Was it was it two guys at sixty five each? Oh, their labor, yes. or just give them their blank labor costs. I think it was two. With, that's what I took it as. That's what I took it. As. I took it as sixty five dollar an hour $65 for two men. Uh, right there. I, I I would bet it's two two people for, for sixty five dollars each. That's each. each 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 yeah. Each. So okay, so they're not cheaper in their labor. No, no, it's it's. Uh, they're, the they're about the same. They're about the same price for uh, um, the physical part, the lights, you know, the, doing the work on the lights. But the difference is in labor. Right. Yeah. So and you know, they're. I got some bad math going on here. Yeah, Pelicans would be divided at two twenty-five by say they just put it on four lights. That's fifty-six twenty-five a piece. Mm -hmm. um, and whether or not that's, you know, we have to get a fair quote, you have to turn around and find out what they're going to quote you for those other overhead lights over the doors. Are you still, we're still sure. So the, the, uh, the Bristol price for, you know, the apples and the apples price on labor is Bristol's 260 uh, to Pellerin's 225. Pellerin, if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> is the gentleman that's doing the voter sites. Is that correct, Pellerin Electric? I don't know. I, I think it is Pellerin. I about. think, I think it is Pellerin. I'd have to double check with um, the chief, but I think Pellerin Electric is the one that's done all the um, electrifying of the voter sites for the fire department on that article. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, if. I, I'm, Frankly, I'm going, to, I'm going to stick to my often repeated, I want to spend where money and where. And oh, yeah. if in, no, this, in this case where Pellerin is, you know, when you're talking about the, the, the lamps, you know, within a few dollars of each other, and Pellerin's actually, you know, $40 less on, on labor, I'd just as soon recommend to you that we uh, ask Pellerin to do the whole job and get it done. And well, we still have to get the prices on for those other lights. That's yeah, the lights. Was, we're lacking. Just by the gym door there. By the gym door. Or the the discounts. Two we didn't quote. Yeah, but it's reason. under a thousand dollars. How much time? How many times are we gonna come back here for the the other two hundred bucks? It sounds from mm -hmm. the breakdown. Yes, it's gonna come in the same ballpark anyways. Yeah. When you're not two minus. Minus. That's right. Minus That's minus that was my point. Lights, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but at those lights, can, those lights way. can't be 280 bucks. Who knows? I mean, because if you look at it, Pellerin's Pellerin's 280. Too. The LED portion, Pellerin's 280 dollars less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's it. But you know, if it increases his labor cost for whatever time, yeah. <laughs> but it, but it's his, his labor. Yeah, we're Jack, talking like plumbers and electricians. Jack, the labor cost that I gave you was the apples to apples labor cost. Yeah. And he, but he's, 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 he's less. It, he's less than. Yeah, but he's quoting it on four light bulbs. And I right, and I did the math. Yeah. I did the math. Uh, so that it was yes. down to the four, yes. four on four, so and his labor cost is less. Yeah. Hmm. <coughs> All right, okay. It's your pleasure, folks. Well, I'm sorry, but I, I think we've got a town electrician here, and we should be using him. That's my personal thought. Well, he is a private. Well, what's it, what he, is, he is where's the talent from? But Where? It's a town building, town and property. We contracted them to do it. Yeah, but he's not hired, just, is he just he hired? He does most of the electrical work for the whole town building. That's my personal view. Why do we just have some one person? I know. I don't, you know, personally, I don't see that it makes a difference whether it's the one person, because we did hire Pellerin for the 
motor sites. It's a different electrical project. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know who's, who did the uh, highway garage. No, Bovair. No, no. That was Bovair. That was for the. That was one of the contractors for uh, trust. So uh, you're right, John. For small jobs, we've been uh, calling the same person without without an estimate. Uh, but other people think to make a difference. Or do you want to talk about it? In my feeling is that other vendors should be considered. Yeah. That's my personal feeling. Yeah, I mean. Well, I don't want it to pull on hold. Somebody's going to trip over themselves out there in the dark. So why don't we take a few minutes, if people don't mind, and we'll see what's going on. Move to Linda non public, and then you can see. Uh, no, it would be more C. So it would be more C A's compensation. Yeah. So it would be C. So we have two estimates here. Um, we're ready to go ahead with one of them. I mean, it is under the thousand dollars. I agree. I just, you know, I still think we're not exactly on on an apples to apples because the that other vendor didn't quote the two other lights that are out. I mean, I, I still feel as it's probably going to be close, but. Well, can we make a motion that if if the additional two lights, the quotes on the additional mm -hmm. two lights come in as the lesser of the two bids when it's all said and done, I'm that, we, that. that we go mm -hmm. with. Uh, sure. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, will somebody put that in the pool with a motion? So moved. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> don't, be don't be taking my words, huh? I didn't even put it in the motion. <laughs> Can you work that out? What do you got? Well, well who are you going to hire? I get it. Okay. Yeah. You know. uh, I make a motion that we award the bid for the electrical work down at the <laughs> police and fire safety complex, I guess would be the proper term, um, for replacing uh, either the lamps or the lights, totality, meaning the ballast and so forth, um, with the LED lights. For seven hundred and five dollars, um, and if the uh, other lights over the garage and the entranceway to the gym in the back of the building are um, less than uh, two ninety-five, actually nine hundred and eighty-five total for the other one would be uh, with it. Um, second it be uh, awarded to Pelham. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank any, you. Anything else? Believe it or not, I don't have any further business with the assistant. You know, I have one more question, Chief. <laughs> I'm going to nail you again. Um, <laughs> the cameras. What is the situation with the cameras of the police department? We haven't heard anything. We we voted that money and awarded the bid, and I know there was a big tear to get them done, and I know they haven't been. So what's, yep. what's the uh, time frame? The, the, the town administrator and I have had uh, uh, brief conversations in the not too distant past about an option, and um, very frankly, uh, uh, Naomi has probably stood by the awarded bid, and uh, I haven't acted on it yet. So uh, now that that discussion is completed, um, we'll move forward to make sure that that gets done. Okay. Before he retracts, retracts his bid. It's been yeah a while. Yeah. Been almost six months. So. 
Okay. Anything else for the chief? Anything else for me? Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Sean. Okay. What did your sessions? Can, can I just have um, under department head um, Dick couldn't come tonight, but he just wanted me to pass on um, with regards to I guess we're going to be able to go live Saturday. Um, they're able to do it um, by working with an old VCR to run it through everything. I'm not sure exactly, but they um, it appears that they are going to go live and they will have the ability to rebroadcast as well. It has a much better picture. They are going to do a run tomorrow, uh, sorry, Wednesday night. They're going to, because um, Wednesday night's deliberative session, so they're going to work with the IT gentlemen from the schools to broadcast and see how that works at there. And then we're in on Saturday. So, but it appears that they've worked it out and it will be able to broadcast. Everybody got one of these sheets, right? Mm -hmm. So you can fill in along as we go. I gave you the article number and I gave you basically kind of a brief topic. Okay. Um, operating budgets. Uh, in, in the past, the uh, chair has done that. I can guarantee you it will be done differently than the last time around. You have to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's going to be you. I that's going to be Tom. If that's okay. That's fine with me. Okay. I think basically all we did was go down and somebody spoke first. That's yeah. kind of how we took it. Non union raises? I'd say that you go to Tom, too, because you worked on all the contracts. <laughs> I said so yourself, more. not nominate people. I'm going to nominate <laughs> Tom. <laughs> I was going to take that, but that's okay. Oh, you want to? Oh, no, no. Who's doing All right. Okay. So who's going to do it? Tom? Unless somebody else would like to. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't want to hog the show. Government building maintenance? Uh, I don't mind doing that one. Jan? Okay. One police cruiser? No, okay. Jack? Additional police officer? Tom? <laughs> I don't mind doing that. Actually. I can give you assignments, too. <laughs> this part of the game role here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fire Department Special Revenue Fund. I'll take that. <laughs> it's all the pointing. <laughs> Ten wheel plow trap. I'll take it. John. Backhoe. I'll, I'll take, take that one. Oh, okay, John can have it. John. Road reconstruction. I'll take that one. <laughs> Jan, you gotta hop in here. Jeez. Part time truck driver. I'll take that one. You sure you want to do that? Do you <laughs> bridge <laughs> reconstruction. Bridge uh, Jan to the bridge. Just Jan. Yeah. Okay. Bolton Field Pavilions. I'm sorry. Who did bridge? Jan. Jan. Bolton Field Pavilions. <laughs> I'm gonna assign one of you if you don't. Don't assign me. It won't be. It won't be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind doing it, but I was gonna volunteer for the next one as well. Well, you can have them both. How's that? Library or? Uh-oh. It's not 630. Yeah. No. I can do the next three if you want. You can do, Jan will do the next three? Yeah. Fireworks, John? Yeah, I'll take that one. The Forester Conservation? I'll do that one. Ricky? I'll do the next one too. Ricky will do the next one too. Pine Hill Road discontinue. I'll do that. Jumps. Jack. Jack. Keno. That was pretty easy. That's pretty easy, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Tom, are you taking that one? Sure. Tax deeded property? John. I'll take that one. Yeah. Uh, finance committee televised. Tom? <laughs> the be I'll take that one. Request for fire. <laughs> Ricky? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other I'll one is, the, one. the second uh, one is the one that's really a moot point. But what, the fire? I'll take yeah, that one. Yeah, that's, Jan did. She one. already beat you. Oh, she did. Snooze you lose. That's good. 
And what I'll do is I'll make a, I'll make a clean copy, yeah. and I'll just give them to you. And then I'll give one to John Foss as well, so John Foss will know who to recognize to speak. <laughs> Yes. I'll give one to Maureen as well, yep. just so we all have it together. Use names, not initials, since we have Jack and John and Jan. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be a little. Well, you don't have two. The year that both Jim Leary and John Lawton were on there, I couldn't use initials. Oh. Yeah. JLs. JL. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I just throw out there if anybody needs anything, you know, Beth is not here, so I'll do my best. But if you need something from a department head, reach out because the department heads will be here as well. Or in years past, we've also turned it over to the department head. Once you move the article and there's a second, you can recognize Benji, Bob, or Sean to speak. So um, those are the okay. ones that'll be there. I'm not sure about. You know, I don't know if conservation's coming. I don't know if um, Bill Tiffany's coming. I don't know. So Bill's usually there. Mm -hmm. He's usually at all the deliberative sessions. Okay, but I'm just saying we've done that as well. If you're, that, if you want to just let the department head speak, because those three are coming. So mm -hmm. that's just an update. That's through two one just before she left. Yep, you'll need that for Saturday. Oh yes, we will. That the the balances and all yeah. the funds mm -hmm. Beth did that before she left. There is one missing on it. Yeah, we can we get that one up. I need to know what's in that. We well, didn't uh, delay the uh, review of the minutes because it, I didn't have time to get through the whole thing. Jane said she didn't. Didn't. Yeah, no, no that's, I didn't either. So they are that's fine. The, the draft is on the website. Yeah. Uh, to sign the payroll and accounts payable checks dated February 8th, 2018, as included in the following. Payroll manifest of $51,063.14, that's a weekly payroll. And then there's a fire department monthly payroll for January of $7,097.20. And accounts payable, $24,988.85. Total amount, $83,149.19. Second. Any questions, discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, okay. On the report, I've added uh, obviously the hawkers and peddlers deliberative session is set for Saturday. Again, I'm going to throw out there, sounds like it's going to be a long day, so pack a lunch because there's not any food. I didn't have a vendor, so I just want everybody to know that. Um, you need a permit for that, though? We just learned. Sorry. But we don't know who's issuing it. Right. Um, keep everybody lean and mean. Yeah. The ACO um, position was talked about earlier, which now we have a date for that um, follow-up is February 26th. And I'll just back up the Hawkers and Peddlers is going to be uh, April 30th for follow-up. Mm -hmm. um, I do, and Sherry, I apologize I didn't call you first. Candidates night. I just got a date for Candidates night, um, March 7th. I'll just explain to you. I was approached by uh, Marge Burke. Um, she called me after she left um, over at the library on Thursday. And because at that time there was several people running for the school board positions, there's two positions open. And so then we followed back up with each other and there are six people running for two spots on the Ware School Board. Yeah. Um, there's only one person running for one spot on John Stark, so I won't invite for that candidates night. But she wanted to, because of the number of people, is maybe do a joint candidates night. So I contacted the school today and we worked out a date um, which will be March 7th, 2018, 7 p.m. at the uh, cafeteria, cafetorium. So that's the three of you. Seven. The 7th. You okay? Yeah. Okay. 
um, and we're just going to post it and, and uh, Marge knows about it so they'll get their candidates to come too. My thought is um, I was going to ask Eileen Meany to moderate only because ja Jack, uh, sure, John's on the ballot, even though I'm not including everybody because there's nobody running opposed other than the selectmen on our side, so I was only going to have the selectmen up front. And so we were going to split the night kind of, is let the town go first and then let the six people go up and the three people come down and do the school part just so people get to know who they are. Um, so that's kind of the plan tentatively. It's in the back of my mind. So, but I haven't asked Eileen yet. We did it that way, I don't know how many years ago, the first time Jim literally ran. Uh, yeah, because we had multiple for three years and multiple for one year, so yeah. Them, yeah. Uh, and then the other thing I'm working on, we tentatively set up is, um, Benji and I had talked about an open house for the garage. The um, what he wants to do, we're looking at the third or the tenth of March, but I was going to pick a snow date instead of a rain date <laughs> because um, we were going to kind of wait till we got a little closer so you can get kind of a basic 15-day window to see whether the third or the tenth is best. That's why it says we're waiting to confirm for potential weather. Um, he thought it would be a nice thing to let everybody go through kind of before we went to town vote. So that hasn't been firmed but it's those two Saturdays it's gonna be one of the two tomorrow I'm going to post the cordwood and the um, 20 hours for the DPW secretary as well yeah we still have to talk about the custodian too I don't know if you want to just we'll see what we yeah I mean yeah. obviously you could, it's not on this week, no. but do you want to put it on Probably the twelfth, or do you want to put it on for the twenty-six? Twenty-six, February twenty-six, for the custodian. Now I sent around the old job description. Do you guys still? You guys have that? You want me to just do the same thing and remind you? Custodian, remind me. I don't. Yeah, I'd have to go. So twenty-six. Yeah, I make some decisions. Then resend. That was electronic, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I scanned it and sent it. It's I an have, old typewriter I, one. Yeah, I must have it somewhere. <laughs> well, I got to file this for. Well, I just thought like today was easier to resend an old one from September to kind of refresh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised we don't have one that's already electronic. Well, I I have Fred's old files. I just haven't gone back to it because it says FV old files. I, it's, it's a it's folder on the server. I just didn't go in there. If it's electronic, I'd be more than happy to. But yeah, I just I think but I also can convert it, as I told you. I can convert it to Word and make it Word, and we can go from there. That's all I have, Tom. Okay. Public comment? Sherry Burdick, 382 Deering Center Road. There was a discussion, I wasn't here, back in December, I believe, and I believe Jan brought it up, and it was about the generator not being sized properly, a possibility. And I, I did a quick search, and also I talked with an electrical engineer, and she may be right, because <clears throat> a, uh, a three-phase electric motor, 15 horsepower motor, on the low end will take 40, 45 kW at startup not 5,000 or 4,000 like was stated. So I just want to let you know that's a possibility because I don't, I, there's no way I can actually do another calculation because I don't know what the other power usages are at the building. I don't know what the lights are going to take, what the uh, heating system is going to take. You got pumps, you're going to be running fluid through the force for the floor. There's a lot of things. You got a welder, you got a big, you got a compressor there a big compressor so I don't know but it's a possibility she's right and when that came up on the on the TV I wasn't here that night it was uh, it bothered me wasn't that a discussion related to oh. the run? It wasn't related to whether or not the generator would cover would carry the pump uh, for the suppression system as well mm -hmm. well the well, compressor is the what the I compressor was mainly about. because the compressor um, a fi this 15 horsepower on the load, you know, 
it's, that's going to take quite a lot. But Along with everything the problem else. is, is the startup, what you've got running it. This is a 50 um, horsepower, and you're, you've got, you know, the pumps running the circulators for the floor, and you've got a, com a compressor kicking in, and you've got welders running, and you lose your power, and that has to start up. And it's a, a 50 kW, then you've got 45,000, and that's on the conservative side. To kick that over. Sherry, that compressor runs continuously. Once, right. That compressor oh, runs yeah. continuously yeah. at 11,000 watts. Right. So it's whatever the base is, it's 250% yeah. amperage that you need to drive that up. So that may not, that may not be right. She may be right when she told you that because it definitely isn't four or 5,000 to start that. And that was a comment that was made here that night. And I said, I was. I knew that wasn't right. Yeah, I, don't. I think when we make comments here, I mean, it's a good thing people are watching, but I think when things are said, people should be, um, should be very, very careful because when you make <laughs> wrong comments, it goes out and every, the people that don't have an idea about this stuff think they're all set and we may end up, we may end up having to buy a different generator. Yeah, I, it's a possibility. I mean, all I can say to that is that you know, we hired professionals, and they uh, gave us a calculation. And you know, our DPW director was involved all along the way and knew what uh, was going to be running down there. So, uh, well, I don't know that every, anybody in this room knows what the load is down there. Do you know what the load is? I don't even know what load is. I mean, not what you know, the load is, but it's. I mean, on all that equipment, that anything that's going to be running down there, there should be on a study done yeah. if they're putting that in as a 50. But I'm sure they did. Well, I don't know about that because this is borderline, is, I, I know, believe. and I only say this by very limited knowledge, but when we had a generator at the store, uh, the problem is if everything were to come on at the same time. That's what you know, I'm talking that, about. That's if the issue, but everything would have to come in. Uh, the welding, the compressor, Everything at the same time comes on, and that surge would be a problem. But uh, yeah, we would stall the generator sure out. That's what you do. Because I don't know what that. Uh, I believe that's what I said. You'd stall yeah. the generator out, then it would nothing would be on. I, yeah, that's a fact. So you know, there's ways, some ways to get around it. But if it's really on the minimal side to begin with, it may be a problem. So. And I've talked to an electrical engineer that has looked at this stuff, and I've talked to a, a regular generator company that builds the generators, and they agree. So, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I would have to, you know, I don't know, I mean, if the people that are putting that together, if they're still over there, or is that completely done it's now? Done. It's, it's done. It's done. done. Yeah. So, well, they'll know when they get in there if they have an issue. Is the compressor hooked up in a way? Is the compressor running now? Cause the, I the com gonna... There's um there's one more um there's something with electrical because as you know um in the compressor when we were bought the compressor we bought something that we couldn't even remotely run anyway when we were sold the compressor when the number that was on the side that's not even there's nothing that big in New Hampshire mm -hmm. so Benji spent a lot of time with Sinels and Angus Rand. And Ingersoll Rand came back and put the 208 on it. And so now the 208 is on it, but there's there's something left, and I'm, I, I, I'll get it wrong, so I won't say it. Um, I, I don't, there's one thing left that still needs to be hooked up, and I don't know what that's called. Mm -hmm. um, I was down there last night. It's not in service yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I know the weight on the compressor was our side, not their side, but we do have to have the electrician do something. Yeah, anyway, I just wanted to bring that. I just think that we have to be really clear and concise when we're giving this information out so people know, you know, that we're not just somebody just saying bad information out there mm -hmm. when it's, you know, we may have be in a, we may have a problem. We may, it may not be right. Tim? Yes, sir. On the LED update, at the safety complex, you might want to see what kind of material they're going to use, what brand, what style, uh, Lithonia or any, what brand they're going to use for the fixtures themselves. 
Some have different lumens, some have different lifespans. I don't know if any of that was spelled out in the I honestly didn't see him. I had him at the podium. I didn't even see a copy. But there are surely different lumen ratings and so forth. You call and it life expectancy. You call it aluminum? Lumens. Okay, sorry. How bright? How bright? Yeah. Like an outside light is like a hundred thousand lumens, okay. uh, ten thousand lumens, basically. Okay. So we want to make sure it used to be water. The brightness is at least what exists. Brightness level. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. My limited knowledge. Are there any thoughts on restoring the second segment of the public comment? We haven't had that. It's been about ten months now. Uh, punch list at the DPW building. Are we at that point yet, or beyond it's it? It's my or? stage. It's my understanding that the only thing we're, Chip is waiting for are stamped plans from the engineer, which is why there's no CO. There is one thing from the fire department. As um, I guess they're in. I'm going to use the wrong terminology. I'm sure. There's a louvered fan in the firewall. And they need to put a relay shutoff on there because if the fire started, the fan's still going to run. So that's the only thing that the fire chief is waiting on. Chip is waiting on stamped engineered plans. Um, that's what I got from today. Okay. Also, on the contract, is a, uh, I had some of the boys were painting fire treated plywood or something down at the DP, new DPW. <coughs> Wasn't there like a... $6,900 paint line. That was for the walls and the all budget. that. It wasn't, they were, their intention to leave the upstairs was going to be plywood. And Benji thought that where there's going to be running up and down stairs and there was going to be possibly some ho like oil that it would just soak into it. Mm -hmm. um, and he thought that it would be easier to paint upstairs and trying to keep it the dirt. That's fine. I just wonder what the paint line came. The paint, the paint was for the, and they have come back um, because I've been down there several times and I went around and I pointed out spots that needed to be touched up and they've come back to do that because it was just when they were finishing some of the others and putting on doors or whatever, there was just nicks that we weren't happy with. So we stuck a blue piece of tape there and they had to come back. I have been back down. It's been probably three weeks, but when I went around with Benji, I was like, I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't like that. But that was to do with the office painting, the office lunchroom. And I hadn't been here for a while, but uh, also the floors were polished at no cost. Was there a reason for that? Were the floors not level? or I think it was, was just for the finish, to, for the appearance. Right, but they're in grease and wet. Uh, there's the um, garage is not. I, I, I realize okay. that now. About the break rooms when they go. Oh, into the, okay. They're gonna go for a ride on the when they go into the bathroom or the office. They're gonna. Well, we're gonna have to get mats. We need mats here because we have to put the sign out every time. The rubber here. If you wear LL Bean boots with the rubber, here, right. People take a flip here. No matter if I put the wet floor sign out or not, we need some mats. And I know coming in from the outside there, there's a small mat, but you're gonna need a runner and you're gonna need a couple other runners because it is very slippery. Yes. Yeah, that I, I thought about that when you mentioned that a couple weeks ago. What about one of the chain link, the metal runners? It lets the dirt fall down through. We were going to put one of those outside, outside the front door so you can stomp your feet on yep. them. Yeah, I knew that. Uh, and here's the deal. The board and the administrator, why haven't we kept up with the bi-weekly reports from the clerk of the works? At this point, we should have 20 plus reports. We have one televised report. We have one report that wasn't televised. There's 30, it's about 40 minutes missing out of the last time Bruce actually did something on YouTube. And I'll tell you what's gonna happen tonight. The second half is not gonna be on there. Cause when you go into, when you go into non-public in between, that to the compu to the computer it shuts it off. I mean, it's but it not came back and you guys were doing something else. It sometimes it does, sometimes it does. I'm just say I don't I don't honestly know what day you're talking about, so I okay. can't. But uh, don't you feel we should have kept up with that? I'm not sure. I don't remember telling him to have. Uh, yeah, that was a 
I remember distinctively. I, would, I, I don't. I'm, that not there was to, I'm not trying to con you. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying that. Well. Uh, you know, because I know, and, and why did Naomi have to call in the end? Why did the administrator have to call Turnstone to do the clerk of the works job? This was to have them get the doors plugged in, uh, get the doors finished, rather, and push the heat to get that going. Actually, uh, I, I guess I probably report... The clerk yeah. said something about, about around the 1st of December was the last time he was on, and he kind of noted that things would be wrapped up, the doors and the heating system would be wrapped up probably by that Friday. Okay. But we're six to eight weeks away from that, and I'm just kind of curious. The, I, get, I get involved with the generator because it was our account, this town's account. They wouldn't talk to Bruce when we were trying to get them to set the tank for the generator. I get involved with that. I Benji was, I didn't make a phone call for heat. I know it was our heating company, Irving, that was doing the propane for the generator, but they wouldn't talk to the clerk. They talked to me because I'm on the account for the town. That's how I got involved. I don't remember talking about heat because okay. I know Benji's been right there on the heat with them because of the furnace, the waste soil furnace. And Bruce has been down there regularly. I know because I've been there when he's been there. Um, you know, one particular Saturday he called me and said, I'm going to be down now. I, there were other times too, but, and, and uh, I went down with him. Is there any the, reason why none of us are called? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering how this, after the fact. There's the, the certain things that mm -hmm. probably aren't noted. That I don't know if litigation arrives, if the building doesn't work out for some reason, or it should have been noted. Because um, I brought up about the generator back sometime, I think in about November, about asking what the return was, if it was undersized. If there's a restock fee, and no one knew what the restock fee was, because uh, my my situation thought was that time is to lease something uh, that would suffice us till we found out what we needed, not knowing if we're going to use that for the fire suppression or yeah, see, I think, other yeah, items. I think you're talking about something different. Than what no, I know what I'm talking about. This is this whole list. It's, uh, Forestry, 20% increase for the forester, the usual 25000 I don't seem to have heard the board speak to that increase. We take the Conservation Commission's articles and bring them forth as they give them to us. Now, one thing about that forestry fund, keep in mind that anything that is is not spent either is never withdrawn for the fund or goes right right back into it for example if you just skip to the next one where it's a larger amount and it, it can be used to, toward the purchase of conservation land if something comes up that never leaves the fund unless something does come up during the course of the year i realize so that but... i i assume that whatever that they have mapped out for the forester to do is a larger amount of work than in the past. I, and he's paid, I'm, I assume, at the same rate. But those are their articles. We've never uh, done anything except move them forward. Um, but they're again 20%. And I was wondering about weighing that 30000 against the actual revenue. Do we know the revenue by chance at this point? I don't have that sheet with me. We know what the total is that we have in that account. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'm talking year to year average. From uh, a given. Um, I, I don't know, Tim, but you know, we don't want to do it without a professional for Oh, I'm not saying that, Tom. I'm just, it's a 20% increase, is what I'm concerned with. And I just like to know what the revenue per year is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, if we're underwater or above water, you know, I yeah. would think it would be. Above, but uh, yeah. What do you want the last? How many years? Oh, a year or two would be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, I think I just, suggest just having that. that for the t for the deliberative too. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, in no, case I can somebody share it. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
one thing that has happened during the course of the last year, you probably heard, and you might even have been here when we had the forester come in because we had some questions about a forestry project down on uh, Hill Farm Road. And I found that it was very uh, enlightening because of the different methods that are, used, that are used depending on the location and the history of the forest in that place. What that said to me is, okay, this is why we don't want people to just go out and cut trees. We want somebody who's knowledgeable to go out and, uh, you know, recommend the... I wish you would use another example for that because the kiosk for the town forest is right there and that thing is such a mess. That's uh, what are you talking about? The kiosk at the town forest. There's a little down. billboard. Yeah. It's a map of the whole farm. airport farm. farm. Oh. Well, it's been better because actually private is. I think John been coming and cutting wood up, but it's it's a mess. Right in back of that, there's a stem that's uh, 14 foot tall. Rather than pay the stumpage for that split and crotch, they nip it up. 14 feet above where it goes into a crotch and that's all through it's a in a Swedish logging technique it's the fault it's not the fault or a process they call it Swedish logging it's how these zipper lines they grab the log and they shred the limbs off tops it and then you got a pile of brush so there's a Can I make one comment? sure that outfit no longer works. Well, and the last two jobs that have been done by the new contract, which is Adler over Bennington, I walked and it is 100% over. But I was in agreement with you, John, about uh, shipping town lots for what? Yeah. What, what's, the, what's the sense? Yeah, the waste. There's nothing to fall back. But, you know, you'll be 100 years when you able to go in and cut that log again. Hadwick's going by my house just about every day and it's not being chipped now. Yeah, it's all logs. That coming off the private property. Oh, I thought that was coming off the town forest. No. Oh. That's off the plant And the other well, thing, not chipping that. <laughs> Naomi, I heard you last week or the week four talk about there was a, uh, you rolled some positions together, mm -hmm. the secretary and the welfare officer. Sure. Was that ever discussed amongst the board? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, never I didn't do it by myself. <laughs> Never heard it. No. Well, you know, because we were ending one of the positions, the discussion might have been non-public, and we couldn't, uh, even in talking to the finance committee about the, the breakdown of hours, we had to hold up until after we'd communicated with everybody involved before we would go ahead and say, this is what we're going to do. So, you know, that may be why they didn't hear that. Because it was discussed in non public, because it was a <coughs> personal issue as far as uh, terminating a position. And also, a couple weeks ago, Rick Hippler, I'd like to thank you for having a conscience when they were talking about the, uh, the town administrator's contract. You asked if it might be wrong or did we do something out of line. I appreciate the fact that you asked your fellow board members if that might have some might have went awry. Uh, and Jan, I know you didn't vote for it, but uh, I don't know. A lot of people aren't happy about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything tonight? Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Correspondence? Okay. Other business? I got one thing. Okay, we got the same thing. Go ahead. We do? No, go ahead. <laughs> well, I don't know. Interesting to see what you have to say. Um, it's, it's from my, my personal feeling, is I'm a little disappointed um, in Channel 6 um, on the presentation of the um, deliberative session dates. Um, two, two of them, the local access channel. Um, the local access channel, channel six. Um, the the two deliberative sessions for the schools show a generic picture of a 
cartoon crowd and the where town deliberative one shows a spending line and it says it's spending so it starts at this big with an s and it's yeah. this big at the yeah. end basically blowing off the top so I, I feel there's an underlying message in there and i feel that channel six should be impartial um it should just be notification there should be no opinions on that that's my own thought process. Who is this on Channel 6? Channel 6. Yeah. So I, I agree. Yeah, actually, that was yeah, not supposed to be okay. political. It really, uh, it, it, yeah, it's a town's channel. Oh, I don't think that they should be stating an opinion one way or another, but just presenting information. But what that does is it's, it's like a graft. Graft. It's a bias. It's, 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 it's a bias graft that says spending orders mm -hmm. for the town. And the reality is that you know, it's only 16% of the, of the tax rate is the town. And again, and you'll hear this from me next week, our town tax rate is the lowest of any town around here within probably at least 30 miles. Uh, so that, I agree 100%, Rick. I, yeah. it, we should I, just, I just feel it should be impartial, that's mm -hmm. all. Well, it's just our involvement. I mean, is it ours? Does the town run this? Yes. Yeah, the There's town. a town budget. Town they, have a, get, they get a budget from the town. Yeah. Then aren't they subject to the same rules right. as everybody else's? I mean, it's an, it's an underlying message in there. You know, oh, it, it's, it's it nothing directive. No, but, but I mean, they sh right. somebody should be corrected in their behavior. <laughs> is Doug the chair of that? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is Doug the chair? Doug, um, I'm sorry, not Doug. Frank, Steve Flanders is Steve the chair. Flanders. Flanders. Steve Flanders, not Doug. Yep. Can we just reappoint him as the chair? Not the or he reapplied yeah. for the position. Well, Doug does all the work. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. does does a lot of the work. I should say not all of it, but he does a fair share of it. Does a fair share of it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Dick is on it, and I think John Lawton. John Lawton mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and I think there's a couple others on there too. Yeah. Uh, we just appointed one, a uh, young lady. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 It's editorializing. Yes. Uh, yeah, public. Something that's publicly funded. Um, John, you have anything? Oh. Jan? Well, this is where I was going to be bringing up about the DPW report. Um, is he going to provide a report for the end, or? I mean, I can ask him, sure. I don't see I mean, why not. I yeah. mean, this is the only thing we've received in writing. I mean, we have no idea if there were any uh, any problems with anything going in there that had to be changed or, um, I mean, I can't imagine that everything went perfectly. Well, we so haven't changed what has been coming before here for money, so there hasn't been any of those that I saw. But if there weren't any change well, orders, I, what happened to that clip that there didn't there go were to the? There. There had to be change orders. With the drainage from the floor. Right. That, that was for that time. tank, yeah, but that didn't that didn't incorporate any additional cost. I mean, there was no change order, and it was because of an, en an engineering design. It was on them. And that was remedied. Well, truly, I mean, I know that it was stated that he would give them a written report every two weeks, I believe. It was every two weeks it was going to be a report. And I would think if you're doing a, over a million-dollar job that you would want to know what the hell's going on for six or seven months. It's like never having any minutes when you've got a committee together. You don't do any minutes. It's the same thing. I mean, it's... Not a good situation. I know that was stated. I can look it up. Well, it's no need. We, you know, I'm not arguing with you. I don't. I don't remember it, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, I mean, you got a million dollar project over a million dollars. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful. I, you know, wait till you get down there. We have an open house, and you. I may go down before that. I might go get a ahead. special tour. <laughs> You probably can. Yeah, I guess yeah, you get the connection. Probably a connection, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but not it, everything no, is just, on a visible side. There are things have, underground. They're no. in I the walls. I just think if you have somebody in charge, I mean, I've been working the works on additions for buildings and, you know, for companies. And believe me, they wanted a weekly report from me. So I just thought that every other week something should have been in writing, what was done, what was seen. and. What the issues were, what you know, if there wasn't any issues, something. If any changes were made, yeah. whether it became a cost or not. Mm -hmm. 
what I will see. What time? After say. after you know, done. Done. Yes. Also done public after other business. Yes. You got anything else? No, nope, that's it. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off. Are you all set? Yeah. Um, Jack, anything? No, just, just that request for non public 91A3C. Okay. So we'll move to go to non public at 820. Are we adjourning after? Yes. 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 Okay. Second. Yes. Hi. No. No, it's going. Yes, we're going in.